as if that were, were not enough, Chris is now the direct, in addition, the director of marketing for 1150 Consulting, a mobile application development firm founded by Indiana billionaire, entrepreneur Scott Jones. Uh, he's an internet social media marketing geek. He, he tells me he's the biggest Star Wars geek that I know. I thought that, that position went to my wife. They can arm wrestle over that title. Um, and uh, uh, so join me in welcoming Captain Selfie himself, Chris Reed. Good morning, everyone. This is a, a great group that we have here, and um, and I appreciate the chance to be here. Um, my title is talk, uh, is my title of my talk is called Choices because I think all of life comes down to the choices we make. And so I want to take you on a journey uh, from 350 pack, 15 pounds to 240 pounds in six months, uh, if this works, and it's not. There it goes. Okay, so this was me at the beginning of my journey almost one year ago, about the first part of February, uh, when this picture was taken. I wasn't very proud of how I looked physically, um, but I had a lot of joy in my heart. Um, this was my definition of fitness. Uh, I joke with people that, <laughs> that if, you, if you saw me running, then you should run too, because there's a chance that something's coming after me that's going to get you too. So um, I, I, I love this meme. But uh, this is the weight loss chart, uh, and I decided to go way on back because I wanted to I wanted to capture what happened, and um, and it took a long time. You can see it took 15 years uh, to build this mountain. And along the way, uh, there were points in which I decided I wanted to take it back. And, uh, and you can see how I stumbled along the way. Those are my failure points. Uh, and, and I tell you, as that mounted, I felt like it took me 15 years to get to where I am. It's probably going to take me 15 years to get back down off that mountain. And I've been really blessed by where I've gotten to. Uh, and so I want to kind of talk about that um, because I think there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Um, this is a great quote that I've held on to for years. Um, just this idea of the journey that we want to be on and the idea that uh, it's going to take a while. Uh, and so we have to give ourselves grace in order to be able to do that. Um, but first, let's talk about something else. Uh, who here is a smoker? Anybody? Awesome, because I'm going to rip on smoking for a minute. Um, I was a smoker uh, for, better put, a half of my life up until I was about 31 years of age. Uh, and I use this as an analogy because I tried to quit several times and failed. And it looked a lot like that chart that I showed you before. Um, we all probably have seen something along these lines. And I knew, um, can I get somebody to bring me that bottle of water back there? I appreciate it. Thanks, man. Um, I forgot to bring it up with everything else up here. Um, so I knew the intellectual reasons to not smoke, but I was addicted. Um, and I use that as a really great analogy against uh, other things. They say that uh, quitting smoking is like is is harder than quitting heroin. Now I've never tried heroin, and I, I don't suggest you do either. But <laughs> it was really tough to quit smoking. Um, but um, I had to have a plan, and I tried, like I said, several times to quit and didn't. Um, when I succeeded as in quitting smoking, it was because I realized that it was a marathon and not a sprint. That success in, in, in not smoking was dying as a non-smoker and how much time I attributed between the time I put my last cigarette out and the time that I exited this plant. Um, not just putting it out. So what I did was they came up with a three-step approach. I used a three-step cigarette that stepped down the amount of nicotine. I took about six months in which to, to get to the lowest amount of nicotine possible. Then I took a drug called Wellbutrin, which was a mood, mood leveler. I rationed that I should do that for everyone else in my life. Um, that was funny. That was funnier in my head. Um, but anyways, uh, and then when I got to about 60 days into that, I put on the third step or the lowest amount of, of nicotine you could get off of a patch system, put that on my arm, and wore that for 60 days after I put my last cigarette out. And so I'm really glad that next month I'll celebrate 15 years as a non-smoker. Now, what, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, what you can see, though, is that first spike when I climbed, started to climb the mountain was changing my addiction from nicotine to food. And, and again, I, I, I say that because it's a framework in how I looked at food. So everyone has to have a catalyst in their journey. And you won't know what the catalyst is when it happens. You'll have to look back to find what it was. Uh, my catalyst happened in August of 2014. <coughs> 
uh, I have this thing called Sparks. I don't know if you've heard of it. We do these short uh, presentations once a month where we feature three time talks. They're designed to be inspirational, motivational, and make you think. You can check it out at sparkstalk.com. But Mr. Travis Sims, a good friend of mine, he's here in the room. Uh, he gave a talk about how he was going to lose, he lost 100 pounds in a year. Um, and, and Travis is a guy, I think we've known each other for like six years. Um, and, and this is a picture of Travis and I like about five or six years ago at the top. And at the bottom is a picture of us that was taken, pictures of us that were taken more recently. And his talk was basically a goal setting exercise. It's what it was, but it was geared around weight loss. And so for six months, if you do the dates of what I've showed you so far, Travis's talk graded on me. And, and, and I tell you what, it's set in the back of my mind and works on me. And, uh, and as I approached the first year and new goals and things like that, um, I had to say to myself, now Travis, I, I, I respect you and I think you're a really amazing guy, but what makes him any more special than me? I mean, seriously, how can he achieve something that I can't have for myself that I desperately want? And so that's the moment. Um, so this um, has become really important to me over the last few months because I realized that, that this is exactly what happens in so many things in our lives. Because what I have now is people that come up to me and say, gosh, Chris, sure, that's really amazing what you've done. And I would really like to get involved in, in, in more physical fitness, but I would really like to lose weight, but I would really like to change my business, but. And so we have to think about the idea that our conscious is programming our subconscious. God gave us an amazing gift in our brains. And we have the ability with our language to defeat ourselves before we ever start something. And so until you're ready to reduce the size of your butt with one T, you're not going to get to the second T, okay? Um, so my plan, a three-step approach. I use the Atkins low-carb diet. I adopted a regular exercise routine. And then lastly, public accountability. And I'd like to take about a minute or so and talk with you about each one of these. First of all, the Atkins low-carb diet. I am not here to tell you that this is something that anyone should do. That's not the point of this. But what I did was I chose this based on intellectual knowledge. When you, when you shift your body into what's called ketosis, you go from burning sugar as an energy source or carbohydrates to burning stored fat. And it's, an, it's a fact. Um, and so because I experienced it and you're seeing the result of it. So ketosis 101, under 23 carbs a day and your body will flip a natural switch on what its energy source is. It's starving for sugar is what it's doing. And so in a survival mode, it will switch into what's called ketosis. But there can't be any cheating in this whatsoever. You have to be physically focused and determined with a, a plan to make this work for you. Um, because the first time to flip that switch takes between seven and ten days. But at the, at the point that that happened, I saw it on a scale because I started to drop on an average of over a half a pound per day. Okay. Now again, there cannot be any cheating and I have to make a deadly, deadly warning about this because if you eat a high protein, high fat diet for a continuous period of time, you're headed for high cholesterol, you're headed for coronary uh, disease, clogged arteries, a whole bunch of stuff that I would never want to see for anybody in my life. So take it very seriously if this is the path that you should choose. So um, I really think this is a really strong analogy because so many people say, I wish I could sprint, but they haven't even gotten to run. Or they say they want to run, but they haven't even gotten to the point of walking yet. And if you're off the couch, then you're going twice as fast as most people are. If you're standing, it's you're burning twice, over twice the calories it takes to sit, okay? So that's what I did, and here's the action plan, was to stand. So I stood during the first part, I didn't sit down and so I walked in this room, but I have a standing desk. When I prepped this talk, I stood for a day um, in order to do that. Why? Because I'm burning calories, because I'm using muscles in my core in order to hold myself upright. Stay in motion, whatever you can do. You can see that I'm shifting a lot more than I'd like to, but that's what I do. Um, go outside when you take your walks. Uh, do it with other people. I love walking meetings. It's a really awesome opportunity to connect with nature. If you're, if you're by yourself, use audiobooks. Audible.com is a cheap way in which to fill your head with good stuff. Get kit nonfiction business development books and personal development books and fill your head while you're exercising your body. And lastly, Netflix. And if you got to be on a treadmill, it's a great way to pass some time. And I, over the last 30 days, have gotten some of my personal fastest time because I've been watching a series called The Flash. And that's really <laughs> right? uh, That guy goes really fast. And I don't think I'll ever get there, but anyways. So lastly, um, you know, talk about public accountability. It's powerful. 
Uh, and I don't mean personal accountability, I'm talking about public accountability. Because when you say something to yourself, then nobody knows. When you tell two or three people, then that's great because you'll run into them once in a while. But when you tell the world something, then you run the risk of shaming yourself and who's gonna do that, right? So let's talk about this a little bit because I was blessed with a huge, I've been blessed with a huge social network, but I knew if I could get out there and I could tell everyone what I was trying to do, that I, would, I wouldn't be able to get home from Kroger's with a chocolate cake without somebody seeing me. And at that point, I would, what was I doing? You know, it's calling myself into accountability for what I wanted out of my life. And so when I put the first post out on February 18th, that was about 11 days in, that I'd lost 10 pounds and how excited I was, uh, what I realized was how many people cared. I mean, and, and, and also how little it takes us in order to build into someone's life. How little energy does it take you in which to be able to say something positive about another individual? Very little. The words come very naturally, but, but the person receiving it isn't going to receive it like it's nothing. It's going to mean a great deal. And, and I'm telling you, people are like, you're doing great. You're looking great. Congratulations. And it's happened over this last year. And, and, and aside of that, even more. But close, man. Clothes cost a lot of money, and clothes are a great incentive to things. I sold my closet over, I'm sorry, I bought my closet twice over in seven or eight months. It's really hard to, to, to dress decent uh, and, and lose a lot of weight. But friends would say to me, shouldn't you save some of those back because what happens when you gain weight? And I said, no. I said, if I have to go out and buy new clothes, then I need the pain of that economic situation to drive me to, towards my goal. And so I, I say burn the bridge when you're going some direction because if it's something that's bad for you, you don't wanna go back there. Um, so results inspire. And just like black versus white contrast provides great definition. And I say that because I didn't wanna take that picture on the 8th of February. The gal that took it wanted me to take my shirt off and I refused because I was so sad. Uh, but now I get, I get amazing joy from, <clears throat> from how it impacts other people as well as their impact and how it affects me in, in order to continue towards my goal. Um, Travis encouraged me to take this picture because it did it himself. Um, the idea, that's amazing, you're right. Wow. So the idea of standing there and having to haul what's now 75 pounds off of a shelf and sit it down was amazing at how much I was hauling around. So, um, this was fun. <laughs> um, but people have come up to me like all the time and say, Chris, thank you for what you're doing because I've lost five pounds. Uh, or I've lost 10 or whatever it is. So, um, but the point of these pictures is also everything you're doing. Home improvement projects don't look cool unless the before picture was there, okay? It ha you have to have that. So whatever you're setting out on a journey and it's great in your life, take a picture. Record where you're at today because you're going to be somewhere else, okay? Like I said, the journey of a thousand steps takes, uh, takes that. And if you can put one foot in front of the other, the natural reaction of the body is to put the second. And by the time you take the second, if you do look back, you're twice as far than of where you were when you started. And you need that in your life. And if you don't take pictures of it, you will never have that contrast to look back on. Um, do things that you could never do before. I did two mud runs this year. Uh, I'm going to do two or three more this year. Uh, this was a picture that was taken of all of us. Travis was there with me too uh, uh, afterwards, but this said restrooms and it pointed upwards, so I had to take, I had to switch that out to the show. But, you know, I've done like three or four uh, 5Ks and people say, oh, you should do this one or you should do that one. But the reality of this is now I do three to four 5Ks a week, uh, you know, because I can. And when I started, I didn't think I could. And, and I didn't, you know, it was really hard. And now I can get a, a, a 5K, three miles, 3.1 miles done in, in less than 40 minutes, uh, which is something I couldn't have done in an hour before. Um, come on. So what I leave you with this idea as I wrap up is that the darkest hour only has 60 minutes. We have cravings, we have feelings, we have all these things that happen in our lives and they are fleeting. If you will refocus your attention on something else, you will find whatever it is that's negative will dissolve itself, and, and you'll, you'll wonder how it happened. Um, whether it be food, uh, a cigarette, whatever it is, you have the ability 
uh, to refocus, and that's the greatest gift that we've been given as we've been made in the image of our Creator. So, to, to, if you'd like to learn more about my journey, there's three blog posts that I set out and, and wrote uh, about that at CaptainSelfie.com. And if you'd ever like to go out socially, you can find me at the, on my social calendar. But to wrap up into what I learned through my journey was to make a plan. Uh, again, you have to set something in motion, but you don't know where you're going to end up. It can look a lot different, but if you don't come up with a plan, you will lack self-confidence in order to even put something into motion. But don't take all day about it. Ship it. Get it out there. Know it can't be perfect and make something happen. Last, just have more than one tactic in your overall strategy. I chose three. There's something to that. I'm pretty sure you can see it. But uh, one will fail, but two will be left over and still standing when one fails. So that's the most important thing there. Uh, and last, public account, or not last, but public accountability makes a huge difference. Uh, if you tell some people, they're going to encourage you, they're going to support you, and they're going to come around you and help you. And last but not least, it is to focus on the moment and not the finish line. You set that goal, but let's stay in the moment and let's focus on the next best thing that we can do. And that might be to not eat that jelly donut. It might be to uh, have a salad instead of a, a big cheeseburger, right? It could be a lot of little things, but they will add up over time in order to great, great things. So thanks. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate the chance to present.